or I'm sorry, in round three there. So um, let's see. Uh, Blaine Campbell is not actually uh, undefeated. He is 2-0-1. I do have standings for you here, though. Uh, we have Robert Moore is currently undefeated with nine points. Same with Michael Cruz, who we'll see here on the left side of your screen with his four-color wolf run deck. We also have Joe Warren. Uh, he is at nine points. And let's see. Alex Bianchi and Blaine Campbell are both 2 0 1. Bob Martin is six points. Leland Bliss, Cody Bujnowski, Robert Richardson, Dave Shernick, uh, Byron Gillen, Andrew Trudell, Evan Lee, Hank Weist, Christopher Parks, and Lenny Larada all have six points. All right, as we catch back up with the game here, life totals are at 18 to 20. 18 for Mr. Cruz. And Blaine's going to go ahead and get a Boros Reckoner onto the board to be responded to by a Grizzly Salvage. Uh, so as we saw last round, Michael Cruz's deck fills up his graveyard very, very fast. And then because his opponent only ever draws one land, he ignores his graveyard completely and just plays out some cheap threats. Obviously, that's not going to happen this game. Uh, Blaine beat him to the Reckoner, so Mike's actually going to have to play some Magic here, and I'm excited to see what this four-color deck can do when we get it on camera here. As we take a look and see, I'm not sure what... Spell it was Mike just cast on his turn here, but I think he's... Yep, Far Seeking, okay. And sends it back over to Blaine, who's now going to probably look to sit back on um, some counter magic here and just serve some damage up with, with his Boros Reckoner. Yeah, I just sent that message in. It's a little important to see his. Um, as we look and see, Blaine Campbell's got some tech going on here. Is that Trading Post? Could that pipe? If that's Trading Post, I'm going to snap play this deck immediately next Friday. And I'm looking to make sure. Oh my goodness, there is a one of Trading Post. I am so excited. All right, I'm immediately rooting for Blaine. And uh, this is the Joe Shea build, as Titan pointed out. Um, Blaine bummed the deck off of him, so... <coughs> I feel like there are a lot of Buffalo guys in the Twitch chat here, and I am... I should know all of you, but unfortunately I, I can't tell by names. But uh, we'll take a look and see as, as Blaine gets in for three more damage here, not really scared of the wolf run, or I'm sorry, the uh, frag tusk on the board. And I believe we have 17 to 20 here for life totals. Blaine's got a frag tusk of his own to take him up to 25. And really just a lot of life gain going on in this game so far. So we'll have to wait and see what happens when the board cleans up a little bit. But 19 to 25 for the time being. And, uh, oh, I know you, Mr. Madden. But I'm not sure. Man, I even... I, I played all the trading posts I possibly could before rotation, and uh, hmm. I, I, I'm trying to think why post is so good here. I mean, obviously, you can just make the make the zero ones uh, chump block for days. That's always very nice, but I believe you had to sacrifice an artifact to return a creature. Uh, and I don't know that he, he plays enough artifacts to make that too useful. Let's take a look at his deck list here while he's in the tank. Four Thrag Tusk, four Fire Seek, four Sphinx Rev, four Verdict, two Augur of Bolas, three Boros Reckoner, two Think Twice, two Dissipate, 
two Azorius Charm, two Tamio, a Celestia Charm, a Resto Angel, a Trading Post, a Planner Cleansing, an Elixir of Immortality. Uh, so that's a really nice artifact for him to, to do some Trading Post shenanigans with. And <clears throat> two Kessig Wolf Runs, an Alchemist Refuge, and two Cavern of Souls make up the kind of goofy lands. Trading Post is an incredibly powerful engine, and I just am not sure um, it has the tools in the format to really be the auto win. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's powerful when you set it up. Well, let me get our get us caught up a little bit here, because we're at 19 to 23 on life totals. Uh, the Huntmaster Parade continues here for Mr. Cruz. Blaine will want to dig himself into one of the uh, board sweeps in his deck pretty quickly here. Uh, he's going to sacrifice the trading post to itself in order to draw a card. And then go ahead and think twice to draw another one. So he looks like he is digging for that board sweep. I'm curious if maybe the trading post should have stuck around. I'm being told by a spotter that... Uh, it's possible there's a planner cleansing already in Blaine's hand, so yep, yep sure looks like it anyways. That's why you sacked the trading post. Okay, <coughs> yeah, and that's that explains the trading post sack since the, the planner cleansing was gonna take it away. Yeah, Joe Shea just said if anybody has any questions about the uh, the trading post, just go ahead and shoot him a Facebook message. He'll be happy to talk to you about it. I have plenty myself, Joe. <laughs> Uh, but the planner cleansing is going to wipe the board. And we'll see what Mike does with his completely unabated turn here. No counter spells from Blaine to wor be worried about, and that's probably the last turn uh, that he can, can accurately say that. And from here on out, too, I kind of expect the... Uh, Alchemist Refuge to take care of most of Blaine's plays, um, really just allowing him to, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm behind on life total here, I do apologize, give me a second. And the Angel of Serenity going to pick up all the value out of Mike's graveyard for him for when Blaine's able to get rid of it. Not for the meantime, though. He's just going to take five. Make total, life totals 20 to 18. But the Sphinx Revelation is going to gain Blaine, I believe, five. Take him right back up to 23. We'll have to see what he's able to do here. He's got two mana. Spending it for... Farseek. Okay, just going to thin his deck out some. Leave you has some plans for the rest of his mana here, because I think he may have paid two life on one of his shock lands for this turn. So let's see if he has a follow-up play. Yep, a Supreme Verdict. So Mike's going to go ahead and pick up those Hunt Masters again. <coughs> and Blaine has a Boros Reckoner to commit to the board. Really, Mike is in a very very good position here if he's able to just play another angel and it looks like that might be his play or he could just be tapping out yep for two different hunt masters that we already knew about so now blaine is in a bit of a, a spot here he needs to draw into some counter spells before mike is able to draw into a second angel and start that engine a very near impossible engine to shut off 
but an exile off of a dissipate would certainly do the job. And Blaine's drawn a fair amount of cards here, so you have to think he's getting himself in a position where he's not going to fear that anymore. Blaine takes two more off his land. Sends the turn back while Michael just flips a couple of Huntmasters. And I believe we're going to be looking at 24 to 15 here on life totals. And Mike is going to opt not to. Oh, he will take down the Boros Reckoner. Okay, and he's going to kill off one of the Huntmasters in the process. Mike must must be uh, getting some clarification here. Don't have to wait long for a judge when you're sitting across from a level two. Okay, so because they transform separately and deal damage before the second one actually transforms, um, he's going to be able to kill one of the transforming Huntmasters. Just not sure if he's going to want to. See, Mike certainly got a lot of land. Let's see if Blaine's got one of those instant speed wrath effects. percent sure what the confusion is but we'll wait till they get everything settled out on their end before we kind of make any presumptuous guesses about what the life total changes will be here Ooh, I'm very sorry about that I'm sure that was loud but I just bumped my headset let me know if the background noise is very disturbing or very loud for you and I'll do my best to squash it Lane's waiting to declare his blockers. And now the life totals are 24 to 6. So a big beating there uh, by Mike this turn. And heck of a life gain play here by Blaine. As he's going to gain, I think, eight. Bring himself back up to 14. There's the verdict from Blaine. Drew enough cards, he should have been able to see it by now. I've got to wonder if... I don't know what he's planning to do with the rest of his turn. I've got to wonder. The Alchemist Refuge at instant speed might have just given the opponent the opportunity to make a misplay. We'll see if he has three extra mana open when he says go. And he might just be holding a Dissipate, looking to, looking to use that as well. I know sometimes the Alchemist Refuge is a little difficult to... Uh, you know, guess how it should be used when you can't see the whole hand, but so we see another auger of bolus here for Blaine. 
digging up all the value in his deck and finds a dissipate that the opponent will just know about now. Thankfully, we get to know about it, too. I gotta imagine Blaine wouldn't mind catching a elixir of immortality. Four mana left open for Blaine, so he will be able to, do, to cast a counter spell. Um, only one. He only has two blue mana left, but Mike's going to do nothing past the turn, and Blaine's going to stick a Restoration Angel to blink one of the Augur of Boluses for him. Picks up a Think Toy, so really gets two cards off the Augur this time. <coughs> Blaine with another Board Sweep and Azorius Charm. Grip is full of good stuff. And an attack for five here. Did we see a pump on the wolf run? I don't actually... Okay, there is a wolf run there. So, an extra six, it looks like. 13 to 14 are the life totals, regardless. And that'll do it. Blaine will take the game one win and get the get the jump start on the, uh, the match here. Hoping to run away with it with the uh, Joe Shea special here. <coughs> so we'll try to get some insight into how these players are going to sideboard here. Mike looks like he's got around 15 cards for Blaine. Uh, actually, it looked like seven to me. Let's see if he's finds room to fit them all in. Yeah, Blaine's deck, as, as John was just saying, looks very well positioned in the format right now. Um, I'd have to do some more talking with Mr. Shea to figure out things like trading post and exactly where, where their value is. I called, him, called it an auto win, and I, I don't want to doubt him, but um, it, it's pretty difficult to, uh, to see the value in it right now. Um, obviously, he had to just kind of sacrifice it off to itself in order to uh, not lose value uh, or not lose the value that it would generate. I don't think Blaine's going to keep his trading post in anymore. Something, something tells me. Uh, Blaine always loves to play around with the camera when he gets under here. I think uh, it was me and Blaine in one of the very first on-camera feature matches here at GameCore. And we had a lot of fun with it. Maybe too much fun. I think if memory serves, we made the footage unusable. So I know a lot of you guys, uh, you know, play up in the Dark Forest area, uh, hang out with Joe, and, and have seen this deck play a lot. Um, you know, he's talked about how the how good the trading post is, and obviously Blaine disagrees. You know, what are some of the values he's you've seen him use with it? What are some of the, you know, is there a good engine in here that I'm not missing just by looking at it initially? Is there anything like the old every turn advantage that it used to generate? <coughs> Let's take a look at the, the players' sideboards here. Mike Cruz has three Sin Collectors, which almost assuredly came in. Three Acidic Slimes, I would have to think, also came in. Uh, three Pillar of Flame, two Abrupt Decay, two Ray of Revelation, one Sever the Bloodline, and one Rolling Trembler. So I would guess at least six cards came in here uh, from Mr. Cruz. Uh, possibly even the sever for some repeatable removal in a game that's that's almost uh, assured to go long, give him some extra staying power. Uh, and as far as Blaine's sideboard, we have three Deathrite Shaman, two Paving Needle, uh, one Aetherling, four Detention Sphere, three Terminus, <coughs> and three Centaur Healer. I think we can just about guarantee the Terminuses came in. Uh, 
and the death rights very possibly as well uh, to take the the targets out i was talking to blaine uh earlier he brought the death rights in and didn't know there was no black mana <coughs> so the the pains of borrowing a deck uh, before the tournament but it didn't cost him a win just cost him uh you know forced to forced to draw instead of a win for him but, you know, the guys who do play control, it's a way to recur um, Oats Mortality. Um, on top of that, you can, um, you know, later in the game, just go, like, Wrath, one mana, make a 0-1 go, and then just next turn, like, one for 20. <laughs> like, I, I did it I did against Joe Warren. In, in the it happens a lot, a lot more often. Like, or if you get, like, Alchemist Refuge, you can end of their turn, Wrath, make a do it, and just wolf them. Like, the 0-1 zero, zero goat is huge against control matchup because they have to, you have to kill every single goat. And if it sticks against control, it's insane. And against aggro, you can just, just pitch a, just you know, you know, pitch a land or whatever. Just like that. you can get rid of to make the go? Uh, just kill one. So let's so see here. Well, even players even should be just about looking at their opening <laughs> hands here. So we'll see if anybody has to mulligan down. And it looks like Blaine is going to have to mulligan down here. Um, it looks like both of them then, actually, because if Mike's already shuffling up again, uh, he should have been the first to make the decision. Double-checking that just to make sure. And that is confirmed. So obviously, Mr. Cruz is going to be looking to assemble the LD plan a little bit here. Um, start slamming acidic slimes and sin collectors and just getting as much value as possible out of restoration angels, which actually... I certainly won't be getting extra value off restoration angels because they aren't in the list. Um, looks like they're one of the cards that made the cut to add the fourth color. Make room for the Boros Reckoners. So it looks like each player is content to keep their six. Mike leads us off with a tapped corset land. Uh, Blaine's going to one-up him with a death red shaman here. Does cost him two life to do so, however. <coughs> and Mike doesn't even have a grizzly salvage, so a little bit of a slow hand here for him. And already uh, has to deal with something before he can make too good a use out of his graveyard. And it is worth noting, Blaine will not have a way to get rid of unburial rights should Mike get them into his graveyard. But there won't be any targets because instant speed, Blaine's going to be able to take them out of his opponent's deck with the Death Rite Shaman. Death Rite Shaman actually beat for one there. Pretty exciting work for a Death Rite who's not used to getting in that kind of same damage. Usually it's life loss. Uh, other than, it's, it's interesting because the aggression is kind of coming from Mike here this time, whereas last game it was Blaine that led off with the, the turn three uh, Boros Reckoner. Blaine's going to drop to 15. And Mike did not have much to commit to the board here. Um, does have a Cavern of Souls, likely naming Wizard. And Blaine decides he's okay to attack for one more turn with his Death Red Shaman. I think I saw two Dissipates and a Boros Reckoner in Blaine's hand. Not sure what the far left card is there. I think it's Verdict. He'll probably try to use his Verdict before he casts the Reckoner of his own, but he might not want to take that kind of uh, value loss and, and just throw away his Death Rite Shaman already. So we'll have to wait and see. But Blaine is going to drop to 13. And 10 now as well. Wow, 
Now the Huntmaster gets played by his opponent. Which is very likely what Blaine's almost looking for, because I think he's just kind of resigned to casting his verdict and, and losing his death right shaman. And here it will be. See what's going on there. Goes the death right shaman. Okay. And acidic slime for Mike. Maybe a little a turn later than he would have liked, but very, very strong to be uh, interfering with Blaine's mana so early in the game. Uh, Boros Reckoner for Blaine will help him to stabilize. to see. I haven't seen a Sphinx Revelation in Blaine's hand yet. That's really the card I would need to see him draw in order to kind of view him as the aggressor in this matchup. But we will see an unburial rights Huntmaster of the Fells. Making life totals 22 to 8. Blaine would have loved to uh, dissipate that on burial rates. Fortunately, it was just not an option available to him at that time. Two more on burial rates, I think, in Michael Cruz's graveyard, or in his hand, I should say. Um, and I don't know that the other card in his graveyard, other than that on burial rates, is a target. It's certainly not a strong one if it is. See what Mike's able to do to follow up here. Uh, a lot of reanimator spells. Not a whole lot of targets for them right now. But still appears to be a little bit in the driver's seat. As he's going to attack with four power worth of guys. Two of which has death touch. Uh, the Reckoner is going to very quickly get in there uh, with first strike and, and chew up the acidic slime. Which will now be unburial rights. Our judge gives us a wolf token to replace a die that is near impossible to see. And Mike's going to get to attack Blaine's mana base one more time. Really kind of removing that out of Sphinx's revelation that I've been talking about. Uh, let me check for you one second, AJ. Yeah, go ahead. Anybody who wants to from here on out, and I'll be reminding you periodically, uh, you can go ahead and vote for who you'd like to be the uh, viewer's representative in, uh, yeah, the Slime Kills Enchantments, Lands, or Artifacts. Uh, whoever you guys want to be the, the viewer's representative in the eight-man Winner Grand, uh, the eighth and final spot uh, in that tournament, or in that single elimination tournament, will be going to the person that gets the most votes here on Twitch. So anybody in the shop today, anybody at all that you'd like to see uh, playing in this tournament, uh, anybody that you know is, is registered or involved in this tournament in some way, uh, you can go ahead and vote for them now. Uh, he's coming any minute. He's leaving. That's why he wanted to vote. All right. So one vote for Hank Waste. Thank you very much, AJ. And we will see you very shortly as you are one of the competitors in that eight-man win a grand. So best of luck to you if I don't get a chance to sit and talk to you before the event gets started. Uh, we look forward to, to having you out here, and we really look forward to streaming that event. It should be a whole lot of fun. Life totals are now 19 to 8 as Judge Blaine is able to get some damage in. Take a little bit more of an aggressive stance. Mm -hmm. 
Mike's going to attempt to resolve a sin collector. Since it was probably going to be eating a dissipate anyways, it gets dissipated. And that leaves a window for Mike to reanimate an acidic slime one more time. Nineteen to six now. These guys are not messing around. They are slinging spells at an incredible speed, making it a little difficult to keep up. So I apologize if it's a little, a little slow here. And we got one vote for Brad Mendez. Thank you very much. I will try to uh, repeat the votes as I get them. So if you don't hear me name the vote, then uh, go ahead and repeat it a couple times until I recognize it. See, yep, 16 to 4 is the correct number. Now we've got some dueling Boros Reckoners running around, and uh, Blaine is getting dangerously close to having to cast the Sphinx Revelation for two just to be able to, to stick around and stay in this game. We will get the reanimator dex graveyard back in view. Thank you for the reminder. There's the, the arm of one John Kapinski. Not quite able to uh, keep his, his strong running going with the, the Junk Aristocrats deck. Ran up against a couple of Ban Hexproof decks. Really just a, a very difficult matchup for him. So he's still fighting for the right for one of his play mats here. No, no, he dropped. Oh, he dropped. Okay. <coughs> so we'll see exactly how this block goes. Oh, he didn't kill the acidic slime, so he went unburial right to. Now this is an interesting play here because Blaine can actually wolf run his Boros Reckoner as soon as he draws a green mana, so never mind. I was going to say he might be able to pump one of them and give first strike. Uh, they both would add first strike. Really wouldn't have done him any good anyways. Blaine says, one sounds okay. They trade first strike activations. A very strong play by Mike to force Blaine to use that one mana. Um, Really in, in kind of incredibly strong when you consider now it would be a Sphinx Revelation for one, putting Blaine to two, not really an optimal play. It might be one Blaine just has to make anyways, uh, you know, unless I'm missing a uh, Sphinx twice. Yeah, so we got one more land, but... Yeah, we have a think twice in response to the, the next LD spell here from Mike. And really, this is just the power of the acidic slime. This is why it comes in. Um, and that's, that's enough to do it. Blaine definitely needs all his colors of mana. There's, there's four colors here for this deck. And uh, it was really just too, too much for him. And Mike's going to even this, this match up at one game apiece. So I'm really excited that we're going to see our first game three of the day here on camera, at least. I saw plenty when I was waiting for the next round to start. <clears throat> but this seems to be a very, very fun and interactive matchup. I'm really enjoying watching it, and I hope you guys are, too. Looks like Mike might be headed back to his graveyard a little bit. I have to wait and see uh, if, you know, how many how many cards he might be changing here, or 
Um, clearly has a different strategy for when he's on the play as opposed to on the draw. Maybe Judge Blaine really wants that trading post back. Looks like he's got one card to change up here for this game. I feel your pain on the Moto Till right now. Um, last night I had my opponent play in the draft I did. He had double... Uh, both games turn to Voice of Resurgence, and I, I never saw a forest the entire time. As Blaine prepares to flirt with the camera a little bit more. Oh, he's a smart man. Smart, smart man. He's got a, a campaign going. Oh, look at the opponent. That's sportsmanship right there. Mike Cruz has already got his spot in the Winter Grand. So uh, he's able to give the old thumbs up to Judge Blaine trying to get his spot. Always appreciate sportsmanship here at GameCore. And it gets him a vote. So Judge Blaine on the board. <laughs> I will uh I will let him know. Fortunately, uh your votes will be voided if the uh, the person you vote for wins the event because he will already get in and we need eight people to fill out the event. So we are definitely going to uh go the whole way, but we got well I had a vote here for Alex Bianchi. I get that down before forgetting that was from Drazak. All right. These guys look just about ready for game three, just in time now that I'm all caught up on votes. And looks like Judge Blaine's got to send it back for six. If you guys would forgive me to just step away for one second. I don't want to cough in your ears, and my drink is just out of arm's reach. All right, refreshment breaks across the board. I like it. So I don't know if anybody's done the math or not yet to figure out just how insane John Kapinski is. There is one mox in the prize pool today for every five players that arrived for the tournament. In case you're kicking yourself a little bit for not coming down, probably should be. It's okay. We at least appreciate that you guys are rooting for us and, and participating here on the live stream. Uh, we only had two people that were in the 3-0 bracket with an opponent in the 3-0 bracket. So uh, those two other players have already drawn. That lets you know they've, I'm sure, done some math about it. See the auger bullets pick up a think twice for Blaine. 
and he cast it for a card here. I did. I'm not sure if I, I missed it. Did he cast it on his main phase, hoping to hit his land drop? Anybody could clue me in there. Let us know if Blaine's digging deep for the land. And a Huntmaster of the Fells here for Mike. And 17 to 20 are the life totals. Uh, should be up to 19 to 20, I'm thinking now. We see Blaine cast his Far Seek. Help make sure he's got the, well, at least one of the white mana he needs in order to Supreme Verdict in a couple turns. See if Blaine's got his land drop for the turn. Otherwise, it does not look like he does. So he does have a think twice here to get him another card. But uh, and he has the supreme verdict. So if he's able to hit the land drop, he will uh, do some stabilizing. But he is all in on the please don't draw an acidic slime plan. That would be just about devastating. Not too much very exciting there in that Grizzly Salvage. Uh, but that Sin Collector is going to get some, get an exciting card no matter what way you look at it. So um, there was a Think Twice, two Revelations, and a Supreme Verdict. You have to think that the Supreme Verdict is going to go away. But yeah, that did seem like a very disappointing Salvage there from Mike's deck. I'm, I might actually... Oh, hold on. He, oh, okay, I was going to say. <laughs> he was just removing it from the list of options, not selecting the Tamiyo. You have to let it happen since it's um, <laughs> And uh, looks like he's selecting the Supreme Verdict. Probably the choice I would have taken. I, I'm not sure, though. It really depends. Like Sphinx Revelations are considerably worse when your opponents stop drawing land. So... It could prove to be incorrect if Blaine's able to string a couple of land draws here together. And let's see what he's going to start out with. I think twice. And he picked up a Thrag Tusk, so no fifth land here for Blaine. And Mike is back on the aggressive here. Leaves the Sin Collector back since it's just going to die to the Augur anyways. Um, gets two damage through. And what five mana windmill slam will Mike have here? Sire of Insanity would almost end the game. Oh, but that is a six drop. And there's the Acidic Slime. Almost better than a uh, Sire of Insanity there. Bad news for Judge Blaine. Looked like he ripped the land, though. Like All right. Passes back with Dissipate Mana open. With a Thrag Tusk in his hand, he can gain some life back. I would have considered possibly... drawing a card off the... Um, think twice on my turn to keep the flip from happening. But... Don't know all the cards in Judge Blaine's hand, so it is a little difficult to know. The, the Sin Collector will take down the Augur of Bolas for, because of the two damage from the Huntmaster. And or 
8 damage here to Blaine. Heads to 6. And a Dissipate for the Boros Reckoner. So that's a start. It's pretty much got to be white mana into... Well, no, because the Verdict was gotten rid of. So not many outs here for Judge Blaine. Let's see what he's able to pull off. He did board in Terminus. Uh, I would think he boarded in Terminus. It does not look as though he drew one. Pays to five mana for a Thrag Tusk. Okay. So he goes up to nine. Gives himself some new life. The ability to fight the Huntmaster in combat here. Definitely a step in the right direction for him. Take a look and see. It looks like Mike's going to keep back the wolf. I think I may have just thrown it in there looking for as much damage as humanly possible. Um, but for the time being, it stayed back. Um, Blaine's going to take three on the turn, head to six, thanks to Trample from the Huntmaster. But he plays... Mike plays another Huntmaster to add even more power to the board and head up to 19 life. That wasn't a very wise. Jesus. Blaine could have used one of those Terminus draws by now. If there's one in his hand, I think we can guarantee it's about to get played. Blaine is certainly looking to sweep the board here, and if that's the case, he will be attacking with that 3-3. Chat suggesting that a uh, block and a rev for 3 is, is likely the best course of action here for Blaine. One could argue that Thrag Tusk is a better option, but Tamiyo is what we're going to see. Anything to help keep that Huntmaster from flipping, I can easily get on board with. Um, Blaine should not be attacking. <laughs> I wouldn't think. Um, okay, he's just targeting with the Tamiyo. Well, the sever the lead or uh, sever the bloodline takes down the uh, only blocker on Blaine's side of the board, and Mike is going to get the game.